Okay, moving forward, we have a resolution for the regular agenda. This is in respect to the death of Clifford A. Moses Jr., Mary Cavanaugh, Chairwoman, Government Operations Committee. Mr. Chairman, it's with great sadness that I move this resolution for adoption. Resolution has been made. Second. Second by Mr. Walrod. Is there any discussion? All in favor, signify by voting aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Carried. We have preferred agenda for Finance, Ways and Means Committee. Um, resolution number two is entering into an agreement with not-for-profit agencies for 2023 in the remaining three, four, and fifth, third, fourth, and fifth resolution are all entering into agreements for not-for-profits for the Madison County IDA, Madison County Office of the Aging, and the Madison County Soil and Water Conservation District. This is Matt Roberts, Chairman, Finance, Ways and Means Committee. Mr. Chairman, I move these resolutions for adoption. Resolution has been made. Do I have a second? Second by Mr. Stepanski. Is there any discussion? Roll call, please. Zupan? Bosberg? Yes. Wicks? Yeah. Jones? Aye. Walrod? Aye. Schwartz? Yes. Wynn? Yes. Kennard? Aye. Ruder? Aye. Cunningham? Aye. Stokes? Stepanski? Yes. Becker? Aye. Kavanaugh? Aye. Roberts? Aye. Maglioka? Aye. Du Bois? Aye. And Corbin? Yes. 458 votes. Carried. Or 1,400. 1,458. <laughs> I'm playing tricks on everyone, making sure they're paying attention. Okay, resolutions for that uh, preferred agenda, Highway Billies and Grounds Committee. Uh, we are actually going to pull resolution number six for next month's meeting. Um, resolution number seven. Eight and nine are all agreements. Uh, number seven is entering into an agreement with King and King Architects. Number eight is renewing an agreement with the New York State Unified Courts. And number nine is modifying an agreement with Lawn Medic Pest Arrest. This is Bill Zupan, Chairman of Highway Buildings and Grounds Committee. Mr. Chairman, I move these resolutions for adoption. Resolution has been made. Do I have a second? Second by Mr. Pernard. Is there any discussion? Roll call, please. Bosberg? Yes. Wicks, Jones, aye. Walrod, aye. Schwartz, yes. Wynn, yes. Kennard, aye. Ruder, aye. Cunningham, aye. Stokes, Stepanski, yes. Becker, aye. Kavanaugh, aye. Robert, aye. Maglioka, aye. Du Bois, aye. Corbin, yes. Zupan, yes. Fourteen hundred and fifty-eight votes. <laughs> Moving forward with the regular agenda resolutions, number 10 is a resolution approving a settlement agreement. This is Mary Cavanaugh, Chairwoman, Government Operations Committee. Mr. Chairman, I move this resolution for adoption. Resolution has been made. Do I have a second? Second by Mr. Bosberg. Is there any discussion? All in favor, signify by voting aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Carried. Resolution number 11 is amending the Madison County Management Performance Appraisal Policy. Again, this is Mary Cavanaugh, Chairwoman, Government Operations Committee. Mr. Chairman, I move this resolution for adoption. Resolution has been made. Do I have a second? Second by Mr. Pernard. Is there any discussion? All in favor, signify by voting aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Carried. Resolution number 12 is authorizing the chairman to enter into an agreement with Systems East Incorporated. This is Matt Roberts, Chairman, Finance, Ways and Means Committee. Mr. Chairman, I move this resolution for adoption. Resolution has been made. Do I have a second? Second by Mr. Reuter. Is there any discussion? All in favor signify by voting aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Carried. Okay, next we have uh, Erica Bird. Uh, with our community health improvement plan. She's going to give us a presentation along with Eric. Okay. Is his name Scott Hayden or Hayden Scott? That's his name. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is this thing on now? 
Okay. You're on. Very good. Do you have the remote mark? Mm -hmm. Look one forward. Okay. Yep. Okay. Perfect. Uh, good morning, everyone, um, and belated Happy New Year's to everyone. Uh, every three years, the Mass County Health Department, in collaboration with its community partners, conducts a comprehensive community health assessment and then subsequently develops a comprehensive community health improvement plan that kind of outlines the health priorities for the county for all organizations to work towards. So what we'd like to do is present that to you today. And here to present that will be Erica Bird. She's our newly named Deputy Director of Public Health. And uh, she was the one that oversaw and coordinated the community health assessment and the development of the plan. So I'm gonna turn it over to Erica. And I'm gonna ma manage the slides, I think. Awesome, thank you. Uh, good morning and thank you for having us this morning. Um, just to elaborate a little bit on what Eric said, uh, community health assessment uh, identifies the key health needs most pressing in our community using data and community input. In, uh, in turn, the community health improvement plan serves as a roadmap to addressing those issues addressed. So before the local health departments uh, carry out these assessments, the New York State Department of Health releases a prevention agenda every five years. As you can see, they identify five bucket areas, chronic disease, healthy environment, healthy women and children, behavioral health, which encompasses mental health and substance use disorders, as well as communicable diseases. Within those bucket areas, they identify goals and objectives that pertain to them. Uh, every three years, the local health departments then uh, are charged to look at local data, um, determine what the community deems as appropriate, and select at least two priority areas to focus our efforts in. Although it is mandated by the health department, I will say this is a great opportunity for us to bring together different sectors to um, work together to improve the health of all residents in, through collaboration. So in December of 2021, we brought together a steering committee, which uh, included ourselves, the health department, as well as two of the local hospitals, Community Memorial and Oneida Health, and Madison County Rural Health Council. They served as the steering committee and agreed upon a methodology to carry out the assessment in 2022. After a review of the local data, including uh, findings from the Mental Health Task Force, um, we opted to select chronic disease and the prevention of mental health and substance use disorders. These are the same priority areas that were identified in 2019. However, the rationale was twofold. First of all, uh, due to the COVID-19 pandemic in 2020, our original CHIP was not carried out. And secondly, we saw that these two were exacerbated due to the pandemic. Of course, mental health and substance use, we know we saw a lot of worsening trends among our residents at all age levels. And then chronic diseases, as a result of the pandemic, we saw a decrease in health-seeking behaviors which reduced diagnosis and treatment of chronic diseases. Uh, over the summer, we convened two work groups around these pro uh, priority areas. They represented community agencies that work with community residents, as well as uh, provided expertise in these topic areas. For chronic disease, oh, you're good. Um, we brought together community agencies to look at these focus areas. You'll see the top row encompasses healthy behaviors, so eating, physical activity, tobacco use, and the, the second row, obesity, chronic disease management for individuals already diagnosed with chronic conditions and cancer. The work groups were asked to review the local data, consider community context, and then select the goals that they wanted to focus on. So going through the goals briefly, um, First of all, reduce obesity and the risk of chronic disease. We uh, intend to launch a 3450 community approach, which I will get into a little bit uh, in the next slide. Um, increase access to physical activity. The Madison County Rural Health Council aims to expand the Monday Mile program as well as their Walk with a Doc program to achieve that. I did wanna just take a step back to talk about the 3450 framework. This is an evidence-based practice that looks at the three health behaviors that I already outlined, tobacco use, healthy eating, and physical activity. They contribute to four chronic conditions listed there, which account for 50% of deaths. Here in the county, it's actually 57% of premature deaths. So we know that changing individual behavior is very difficult. 
This framework takes a look at a, com a community level by targeting businesses, schools, townships, and changing the environment in which people make healthy decisions. The next goal is to improve self-management skills for individuals with chronic conditions. We've recently launched a Healthy Homes program, which provides free in-home assessments and education, um, including targeting asthma management and radon exposure. We also aim to relaunch our Healthy Workforce Initiative through the um, beginning with a conference in fall of 2023. The Rural Health Council will be expanding the mobility management program to ensure that adults can uh, reach their medical appointments. And lastly, increased cancer screening rates. Uh, Rural Health Council will be establishing the first annual breast cancer awareness and screening event in October of this year. I will say I'm mentioning lead agencies, but all of these strategies are done in collaboration with multiple partners. Turning our attention to behavioral health, um, same process, a uh, community work group got together. We reviewed data indicators in the next, uh, in these focus areas, including alcohol, opioids, marijuana, particularly in, uh, in light of legalization, mental health, specifically depression, suicide, and adverse childhood experiences. Looking at community context and considering the initiatives that are already taking place in the county, the group agreed upon the following goals and strategies. The first of which is preventing underage drinking and excessive alcohol consumption by adults. Bridges recently received grant funding to start a community coalition for harm reduction in alcohol and marijuana. Um, this coalition will feature uh, representatives from at least 12 sectors and address harm related to those topic areas, particularly given the legalization. Um, on our end, we will be doing a health issue profile, looking at local health uh, data on alcohol use, and hopefully that will inform the coalition's initiatives. Uh, next, we facilitate supportive environments. So the Rural Health Council has recently expanded their programming to include mental health first aid training. They are starting with school personnel and youth um, for their target audience. Uh, they're also, I mentioned Walk with a Doc. This, um, they recently did uh, a series with mental health providers. So a little bit of education there. And then they'll also be looking at expanding the mobility management related to this um, because of um, social support as well as those medical providers. Next, we have prevention of opioid deaths. Um, some of you may know that during the pandemic, we were testing wastewater for the virus. Um, we actually can use that same technology to test for opioids. Um, so we'll be starting with that this winter, I believe, yeah, February. So um, we'll be looking at monitoring and defining a baseline so that we can see when spikes occur and be sure to inform community members of that. We are also expanding the community access to naloxone. Um, many of you know that we've already put emergency boxes of naloxone here on the county office building. Um, and we are working with community organizations to expand that. Prevention of harm around cannabis or marijuana use specifically. Again, that coalition will focus on harm reduction activities around marijuana and the wastewater surveillance program will also monitor cannabis. Reduce the prevalence of major depressive order disorders is our last. Um, Oneida Health has started a collaborative care model which integrates behavioral health into primary care settings, including the Women's Health Center. So we are beginning the action cycle now. Um, the plan will be implemented over the next two years, beginning with promotion of the plan and then monitoring to see how we're doing in terms of progress and evaluating um, those measures. The steering committee will meet uh, regularly to discuss the progress. Uh, the steering committee will also include Bridges, who's serving as a lead agency on a number of strategies, and Tisha from Madison County Mental Health to make sure that we are uh, in tandem with the strategies she's already been working on. And just to leave on a positive note, um, many of you may know this already, but Madison County is ranked 271 healthiest county in the USA, and then ninth in among counties in New York State. Um, we see that the community health assessment is one tool to achieve that status, um, and we hope to become even healthier through this continued efforts. So thank you. I appreciate your time. I've got a question. Um, where is the wastewater surveillance going to be? Um, you know, which communities is that going to take place? Uh, 
we have all I think all the public systems have signed up except for Hamilton chose not to participate. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, I didn't know. That's why I asked. Okay. Then we did see. reach out to them and all right. them they, well, let me see if I can them. have some potential influence here. It seems kind of wrong. Like, why wouldn't we participate? That doesn't make any sense. Then I was just wondering, the other question was about the Healthy Workforce Initiative. You said sure. we launched that, and I don't remember what that was about. So sure. could you share that? Sure. Back in uh, October um, 2019, we actually had a conference um, over at, uh, what's the name of that place? So what's that? White Eagle, right, where we, we had... Um, uh, speakers on the topic of uh, healthy workplace and healthy workplace we look at it a little differently it's not just about um, like um, the traditional what I'll call the warm fuzzy stuff the the healthy eating healthy you know that type of stuff it's also looking at occupational injuries and illnesses and how those two actually um, link together so obesity contributes to injuries as well as um, sedentary workforce uh, lifestyles also contribute to obesity things like that so it was uh, meant to start looking at the, this was actually based on the 2016 community health assessment where it's identified, the, the priority issues there were um, colorectal cancer screening and adult obesity and the, 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 the environment in which to target those initiatives were in the workplace. So the Healthy Workforce Initiative was formulated at that point and expanded. We're also looking at um, other areas. We have, a, we have a website already built for Healthy Workplace that provides information for employers we also um, are looking right now to, at least internally, to get more occupational health data through our medical record system to be better inform our efforts through the county and, and target more occupational type of health issues. Is uh, opioid overdoses up for the county? Yes. Considerably or? Um, I believe in 2020, we had 10 deaths and in 2021, 14. Okay. And unfortunately, we anticipate 2022 increasing as well. Right. Uh, suicides up for the county also because of pandemic stress and other factors. And Yes. You think the, we're going to have some profound effect with these marijuana dispensaries in the county for health? I mean, what they, what they found like in Colorado or someplace where they, it's been, they've been doing this for a while, is it? had an adverse effect on a youth population with legalizing marijuana or what's the, what's the, what's the trade-off for that? So I think that's one of the reasons that we chose this as a goal is to be able to start monitoring data. There's not a lot available right now publicly um, at the state level. Uh, in fact, Bridges just released a survey um, of marijuana use and perception in the county, um, but there are some concerns, particularly among youth. Um, you know, when it's out in public, when it's in the home being used legally, um, what are the implications on youth usage? Thank you very much. Right. Thank you. Hey, next uh, public comment, got uh, Hayden. No, I got you signed up. Okay. Anybody else have anything? Motion to adjourn. Motion by Mr. Ruder, seconded by Mr. Bernard. All in favor signify by voting aye. We're adjourned.